Hey, what is going on everybody? My name's Luke. Welcome back to No Disintegrations. I know it's been a while since I made a video, um, but I'm going to try and start doing it again. I know I keep saying that, but uh, yeah. So, in this video, um, I'm actually going to be ma making it into two separate videos. We're going to do one that first covers the list, and then a second one that I'll dive into, you know, basic strategies and how you should deploy and things on a, a table. So the list that we're going to be talking about, which I think is actually going to take over the meta, um, and actually I think it's better than uh, current clones at the moment, um, and this is the Iden Versio with the Special Forces. Um, basically what it is, you're just spamming 3-3-3, um, three, three, three. so you got three Shores, three Mortars, and then three ISF. Um, so that the total activation count for this list is 10. Um, the basic build comes in at 790. The last few, like 20 points or so, are up to you, um, but I think generally it's going to be very similar. Um, there's a couple couple different upgrades that people differ on, but this is what I think the uh, basic build should be. So, uh, starting off with uh, Iden Versio, one of the best, if not the best, uh, commander for the Imperial Forces right now. Um, no surprise that she's also the most recent one. Um, she comes in at a starting cost of 100 points. Now, she is very good. Um, reasons being, she's not just a sit back and do nothing commander, kind of like Veers. She gets up there. She can fight. She has a lot of health. Um, she puts out damage. She's very good. Um, so how I like to run her is with offensive push, which gives you tactical one on a move, and it's a recover. Um, I also like to put it on situational awareness because it lets you dodge crits and she has the quick thinking keyword which she does a lot of the time where she gets an aim as well as a dodge. Um, so those are the two um, uh, upgrades for the uh, what's it called training slots. Um, for the loadout I guess I would put in tenacity. Um, because she can be a beast in melee if that's how you choose to run her. Um, with Tenacity kicked in, that would be three red. And then the droid adds three white. So three red, three white. That's a do back uh, attack. So that's pretty good. Um, I also run her naked. I don't bring a gun. And here's the reason why. Uh, she rolls three white, re uh, white attack dice with surge to hit. Now, at first glance, you're like, well, that's going to be terrible shooting in the cover. Which it would be. However, she has the keyword marksman, which uh, allows her to spend aims to upgrade those hits to crits or blanks to hits. Um, so knowing that, and on average, she's going to roll at least one. Um, that's the average because you have a three-eighths chance on each of the dice times three. That's nine out of eight. So you're probably going to roll, roll at least one hit. So if you have at least one aim, that's going to be turned into a crit. Uh, which therefore means that she just kills someone because she has pierced one and that's why I don't like bringing a gun because With so many red save armies out there, especially with clones running around um, the pierce is huge um, And also it's not increasing her cost uh, You know 15 points for these guns is a lot considering she's only coming in at uh, 121 points right now, so if you think about it that way that would be like a 10% increase even more even more than that uh, in her cost so I don't think it's a very effective way uh, it's it's certainly fine to run this gun if you're facing rebels or droids a lot this gun is going to be very good um, because the pierce obviously isn't as good versus white saves as it is versus red but if you're facing you know clones that have red saves with surge you know the pierce is going to be money um, she also has a couple cards where you might not even be using the gun, and you might be using the concu concussive blast, excuse me, or the um, sharpshooter too. When she has sharpshooter too, this is going to be very good. Um, also, if you get her in range one, you're going to be rolling six white dice, which is very good. Or again, if you get her in melee, three red, three white, very good. I always run the droid on her. I think it's a steal for 15 points. Um, it adds one health to her and a shield and it also allows her to do some shenanigans with like the standby because you could forward cohere the droid 
um, and you can measure standby range from the droid. You can also throw the droid forward into a mine range. The mine blows up, but she can't be hit by it. Um, and then there's also the fact that um, it adds three white dice and suppressive in melee or range one. So that's going to be very good. Then also in combination with her um, incapacitate card, which I think might be her best card, uh, second to tactical strike, um, this this can be a game winning card for you. It it allows you to put three suppression on a trooper unit when your when your droids within range one of something, and then if they're a core unit, you can basically just activate them for the turn without them going. So uh, if you think about it, like you're playing a clone army and they have a Z6 with Overwatch or offensive push, 91 point unit, you can just negate that unit for an entire turn, which is going to be very good. Um, so it's a it's like a win card. This this card you'll use at the very end. Let's say you're playing key positions. You go with uh, Ida Versio. Your opponent doesn't expect it, you know, and you activate their one of their core units. So now that they have one less on the middle position or intercept or recover anything, this card is going to be very good. And it's hard for your opponent to think about it in advance, which is uh, something that you always want to keep in mind. If you're playing Ida and you want to be thinking about this card, but it's hard to uh, you know plan ahead for it because it's such a uh, unique effect. So um, it's very good. So that's why I always bring the droid. Um, then moving down the list, we have you know three shore troopers. Nothing's changed with these guys. They're still really good. Um, and I put recon intel on them. That just allows you to forward advance for turn one, so you can just kind of just. Hit them with everything you got, turn one, and just start to you know roll over. If you keep producing more damage, um, it just allows you to put shots on target turn one. Um, and most lists probably won't be able to handle the amount of firepower. Uh, so three shores, you know, still really good. And then you know three mortars as well. So with the recon intel, you'll be able to scout forward, and then you can even forward uh, place the mortar. Um, so you're probably going to get, let's see, uh, scout move is four inches, and then another four for the, um, or excuse me, three plus the base size of the mortar. So you're looking at about nine inches, I think it is, uh, forward, and then you consider range four from that mortar. I'll show you in the table what I mean exactly, but it's going to be very far, so it's going to be hard for your opponent to um, deny shots from those mortars. Uh, so then moving down, we have the Insp uh, Imperial Special Forces. These guys are extremely good, especially paired with Aiden. Um, I probably only will run with Aiden um, just because of how good they work together. In other lists, I don't think they do as well. I think you have to have Aiden basically to run these guys. Otherwise, you're probably just going to be sticking with the snipers. So these guys um, with... Uh, uh, marksman, reliable one, infiltrate. Uh, they have courage two, red saves. They throw four black, and then the T21. You're always going to take the T21. Uh, four white, crit two. So you're basically a surge crit. Um, they're going to be extremely good on the attack strike shot, which you're always going to be uh, throwing down first turn. Let's just take a look at that card real quick. So what it does is it allows you to give an order to item Versio and three troopers, and then when those troopers are special forces, uh, they can decrease their speed to one, and if it does, then they gain steady and tactical one. So what this allows you to do is double move, pick up two aims. I always put offensive push on my special forces because of how good the keyword marksman is. So you could have three aims on that turn, and you're double moving at speed one and then shooting range three at something and you have infiltrate so you can pretty much line up a shot every time um, onto something so that's the basic idea um, of the list command cards I personally am going to be running all of um, items cards and then ambush and coordinated fire so you know this one's very good um, gives her sharpshooter to two and one aim token at the beginning of the turn. And then at the end, she gets a dodge token and a standby. So this is one of the times where it's really good to be in melee 
because that standby token, unless they have like suppressive melee weapons or if they have force push, you're going to be able to use the standby to attack twice. Um, now, I can see a case for bringing Overwatch just because of this card, but um, I prefer offensive push in my list. So this card, very good. Um, and if you can get the crazy, you know, six um, dice pool with Sharpshooter 2, you're probably going to be rolling, um, what is that? Six times three is 18, so that's two. And you have, so probably like three, maybe four hits, depending on how many aims you have with Pierce 1, Suppressive, very good. Moving on, uh, Concussive Blast, you're going to want to use this card anytime you feel that Aiden needs to refresh because it gives her a her a free recover. And then this gun's pretty good, uh, five, uh, excuse me, five red, uh, has scatter and suppressive and also blast, so gives her another sharpshooter. Um, incapacitate, we already talked about. I run coordinated fire because uh, giving aims to units that have marksmen is very good. Also, um, on this turn, you're generally going to be playing at second turn. You're going to have pretty much full order control. Um, because you have the three shores, which then coordinate to the three mortars. So it'll be, you know, six core out on the table, and then you'll have three special forces and item left. So it'll be kind of per perfect order control. You can put HQ uplink on item if you really so choose, um, just to make sure that you have per perfect order control on that turn, but it's not necessary because it's only going to be that one turn that you're going to use it, really. So... There's that, uh, attack strike, I think you should always play this turn one. If you're not playing this turn one, you're probably doing it wrong. Um, it's, you know, just the game that we're in of all the alphas. You know, if you think about it, we have attack strike for the Imperials now, we have take that clankers for clones, and then we have all the rockets from the Mandos. So we have three um, alpha strikes in the game, and we have four fract factions, the only people that don't are uh, droids sadly but droids have a way of countering that because they have perfect order control on turn one always if you if you build the list right and you can play uh, standing orders so I think that's going to be it for the army um, then moving down for the battle cards uh, you can you can change it up however you feel um, but what I like to play is major offensive uh, long march advanced and rollout as you notice all of these deployments are going to be on the right side so I don't have to worry about thinking about different corners when I pick a side if I'm blue player I can just look at the table and be like alright this right side is better also you notice that all the deployments are kind of like um, an L shaped that allows me to defend against things that have secret mission and it also allows me to kind of clump up and keep my forces together, which you want to do with this list. Um, I know that a lot of people get tempted with the infiltrate to place, you know, all their units on one side and then have the rest over here. But then if you think about it, you have like 400 points over here, 400 points over here. If they just go at your 400 points on this side with all their 800, they're just going to get overwhelmed. So you want to keep your forces generally put together. There's a couple cases where like it's recover the supplies or something and they put like a basic rebel trooper and you can just overtake it with uh, special forces. That's a case where I would do it, but we'll talk about that more later. Um, objectives, sabotage, you know, this list is going to be hard to kill off a u full unit just because red saves. Um, and generally it's a tie game because both sides do their vaps and then it's just about kill points. Recover the supplies. If you're a blue player, you're going to be able to place first. So you just put Iden right on that middle box and pick up and run. And then you have all your forces going at them. Um, also with the recon intels, it'll help your shores to pick up the boxes turn one. So there's that. Um, intercept. This one's pretty good as well because you have 10 units, all red saves. Um, so it's going to be hard to kill them. And you're also going to be able to deploy your special forces and lock down that middle right away. As well as, you know move your mortars up forward and all the shores with the recon intel so uh, this one's pretty good um, it's gonna be a shootout and you have 
lots of units that roll, you know, black dice, white dice with crits. So you're going to be shooting them off the board. Payload, this one, probably the worst of all four. Um, just because it forces you to get into um, close quarters with, like, saber users sometimes. And you have to be moving. You know, the mortars don't really like to move, but they can if they need to. Um, and the shores, you know, they just like aim shooting, same with the special forces. So this one's probably the least favorite of the four, but I think you bring this because you don't want bombing run. You don't want hostage. Eh, I don't think you want that. Breakthrough, definitely not. Key positions, um, again, force users and tanks can kind of take over the middle better than you can. So I think you bring payload just because. Conditions, uh, I have rapid. You'll probably pick a mortar just to start um, for your rapid clear obviously just basic hostile environment is pretty good because you have um, you know four units that are well actually no sorry seven units that are courage two or higher so uh, the expression might not matter for them and then you also have a bunch of things that have suppressive and things like that so keeping suppression on your opponent is going to help you more than it is going to uh, hurt you, I guess. Supply drop, pretty good because you have four units with infiltrate, so you just start them on those supplies, they pick it up, and then they can do their thing. Um, so yeah, that is going to be it for this video. So hopefully uh, you guys learned some stuff. In the next video, I'm going to be on the table and actually covering uh, little strategies and deployments. So, all right. That is it.